Hello, boys and girls, and welcome back to another thrilling episode of Kinyaku Sensation. This time, we're talking about everyone's favorite, second favorite visual novel on the VN database, Steins Gate. Joining us today is, of course, myself, a man made of bread, and also David. And in addition to me, I have one Ashley Elsewhere. Hi there. That's her, one Austin Dojin. Hello, good to be here. Always, always a blast. We also have a return of a one Mr. Freelance. Greetings. One returning stronghold Magus Verborum. We need to smash the establishment and seize the means production of time machines. That That is absolutely 100% true. And last, but mm -hmm. certainly not least, we have the man himself, none other than the famous rhubarb pie, Rinny. I, I was I was wondering what it was gonna be. I, I knew I knew I wasn't gonna get out of this with just my regular name. Being I was predicting said. rhubarb. Oh, oh, never, never. Of course. What yeah, do you, he, he what said rhubarb you about me? three times over the last week, so it's kind of obvious that he's gonna go. Well, for that. you know, sometimes that's just how the cookie crumbles. It's just is a rhubarb pie dissolved. <laughs> it is. It is for the time being. Yeah, so today we are all talking about Stein's Gate. Now, before we uh, get you know too far into discussion, I want to know who has and has not read the story. I know I have, and I believe Ashley has as well, but has anyone else already well. read the story? Oh, you mean the whole or, thing? Or, or is at least familiar with it? Uh, I'll count watching the anime. Anyone? No? Even though you shouldn't. <laughs> Even though I also agree. All right, so it looks like all of, a lot of our friends here are all new. So what were what were first impressions from all of you lovely ladies and gents? Well, no, because Lady has already read. But what, what what were all of your first opinions? My favorite first well, impression was uh, finding out that the I main character is I'd a like chuny. <laughs> that was He's great. A wonderful boy. And the thing I is, I, I love Chunies. Like, any Chunie is instant waifu, and then we get Rintar, and I'm like, hmm, I'm kind of conflicted here. Honestly, I didn't know what I was going to expect, but I guess I always expected, like, the main girl to be emotionless from pictures I've seen of her. Right. <laughs> Pleasantly surprised that I'm wrong. Yeah. Um, but otherwise, I'm liking it so far. The I like how they're able to make sci the science that they're talking about sound as if they know what they're talking about. Yeah, it's presented I, uh, the physics. I, I went into this completely anticipating that I would be really. I, I'd get the squicks from the eyes, but the eyes mm. have not weirded me out, uh, which, which is pretty good. Every, every yeah. now and then, it looks it's kind an of interesting weird. art style. Whenever, whenever Mayuri makes her sad face, I'm like, "You look kind of off. Please stop doing yeah. this." Yeah, the art. The art's by the uh, Black Rock Shooter artist, and it is very heavily stylized, as I'm sure you're all quite aware of. It is a very interesting artist. Yeah, I'm actually enjoying it a lot. Can't draw men. This no, is no. Daru's forearm the is the length of most girls' torso. <laughs> yeah, I was expecting the visual novel to just go straight into all this uh, cool sciencey time shit, but it was a Starts lot like nerd bullshit. It was it was a lot like rewrite, just starting off with a bunch of random comedy. And you know the best stories. I mean, you gotta light, lighten up the beginning before you get to the dark shit. I mean, yeah, I a lot of really it's enjoy that it kind of starts small and it builds, and that doesn't oh, mean yeah. that there yeah, isn't any story shit. Like, I really enjoy the fact that we actually get, like, these are all these different theories on time travel, and we'll get to that, but, like, black holes <laughs> and, yeah. and scientific yeah, research they stuff. To out, they make, like, 12 theories of time travel, but they only cover, like, two, and just do the rest of them off screen. Yeah, the Which many the worlds interpretation key? is the only thing that really ends up persistently mattering in terms of time travel theory. Maki says her little presentation. <gasps> Steins that... Gate doesn't have many worlds. Mm. <sighs> well, <laughs> that's not uh, that that's far. not something we can quite get into quite yet. I was going to say. I, I mean, I don't know if there's many worlds or not. So yeah, yeah it's fun to speculate. I don't even know. Yeah, Bird was the one who said it. That's why I reacted that way. Yeah. Anyway, so um... what did you? What did you? Did you know anything about the story going into it? Did 
uh, did you know any plot points or any of the sort of ideas I that are bumping around? Time in it? travel was involved. Yeah, I, I knew time, time travel. travel. I think that's, that's fairly that's standard. That's pretty difficult to avoid. Girls, and that was about it. Yeah, time travel. Um, that's all I, I knew there was like maybe some like insanely violent things in it. Maybe that's not what. Yeah, that's no, don't worry. <laughs> I mean, there, that's not. Or maybe so it might, maybe it got, it got like I know it had some like graphic images in it. No, it but has so some it has unsettling the most things. Headshot that has but... ever occurred in all of fiction at one point. Like, oh my god! It's like when someone gets shot in a Disney movie. Wait, if you can get shot, you know, like, I don't like, think there's even people do not get shot in Disney movies. As a matter of fact, is, uh, well, let's they do see like, like one... in like, like you do if you're a deer. That one guy from oh. Tarzan got hung by a vine. So Which that's is not a back to not being yeah, shot. But that, did he get shot? Fact. Who cares about okay, but like, like, in like those God, like, I love being on the Disney like, podcast. Like animated movies. <laughs> Welcome like... to the Disney podcast. Signsgate Disney movie. Who's your favorite villain? Mine's Maleficent. Not true, huh? actually. I like Jafar. Mine's Thank Dr. Nakabashi you know, talking about Steinsgate. My favorite is Sam. I already made that joke, Rene. Come on. Disney owns going, everything. Going into this story, I didn't know much. I knew there was time travel, so that, that much didn't surprise me. Um, I have in my notes, I have a bunch of waifu nonsense, watch out for the cafe sequences, which were not as bad as I thought they would be, but yeah, I, I'd seen some of you guys reading it and being like, oh, the cat cafe sequences are the worst. I was really um, entertained by them. To be fair, they're energetic. Yeah. They're not, like, stupid. They don't require characters to act like idiots, like... The annoying character in another visual novel, yeah, like Ferris is actually yeah, a person that exists princess. in this universe, and she likes to be a stupid fucking cat girl maid. I just remember like yeah. a lot through what we what we've read so far. I was like, what is this? What is this visual novel? What is going on anymore? What is it about? Yeah, that's that's what's kind of fun going from. Like, like, I thought this was about time character. travel, but now we're just. Talking about waifus. Yeah, well, yeah, that's that's fun. one of the things about Steins Gate is a lot of the story, um, a lot of the point of the story is constructing what happens, or uh, constructing and explaining what exactly happened mm. in the first 30 minutes of the novel, in which many things are thrown at you. Those first 30 <laughs> minutes are incredibly dense. Why are we just microwaving yeah, th things? Those first 30 minutes are incredibly dense in information. There yeah. are yep, a lot yep. of things every detail all my, it is incredible okay. it is incredibly okay. well kept and I all of it not all incredibly of it filters back information. there are like five important things in it tops maybe even I mean, it's, four. it's pretty clear that we're going to be coming back to that to that sequence like and and this isn't even like me being super analytic or anything this isn't even a theory this is just a character comes up to the main protagonist and it's like you five minutes ago the audience knows this is a time travel novel so we should expect that we're going to be returning there at some other point, <laughs> yeah, know? like that's 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 obvious. It's obviously going to happen. So yeah, definitely reading that that prologue, it makes a really good impression of you. Of like, these are the kind of stakes that we could be working with. This is an idea of the scale of time travel that we're working with as well. Um, the first, I guess, would be 30, 30 minutes to an hour. I thought it was really good. Um, I really. Like, this is the kind of opening that I enjoy in a novel. I enjoy cold openings where you're not really sure what's going on. You have to kind of piece things together. Like, there's even a moment where we're introduced to our main boy. He's talking to his phone, and I'm like, oh, he's like a spy or something. Was nope. that... Wait, why nope. is the phone off? <laughs> why is the phone off? I think, that was, I think that was one of my favorite scenes in the prologue when he's, uh, when he's down with Karisu. And he's talking to his phone, it's like, I've been, caught by, I've been caught by an agent of the organization. She grabs his phone and goes, what the fuck, this isn't even turned on. What's yeah. on? And then, like, oh, and then, you me. And then, like, he, like, trips he over himself for like, about five lines. Yeah, and he's great. like, fuck, fuck, um, it turns off if it gets too far away from me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> Immediately after it leaves my hand, it turns off. It's like off. a looping angel. It turns off if anyone under me looks at it. Right? It's great. I love him. I love the way that he, like, yeah. treats reality, how he's trying to, like, fast. Faster than cope with all his nonsense. Yeah. Yeah, well, trying to say the, the well, commander of his own destiny. While we're on it, uh, yeah, what do people in general think about Okabe? Uh, he is a fun. very, he's one of my favorite he's protagonists. I, I, I think he's think. very he's well voiced. He is very well, he is very oh, yeah. well constructed. I am, he's very well voiced acted. He's ho ho in Kiyoma. Ho ho in Kiyoma. I much prefer I much prefer watching a much worse, 
Chaos protagonists at Okabe. Like, I enjoyed the protagonist of Chaos Set and Chaos Child a lot more um, than I did Steins Gate because they're just completely lost. But I really do like Okabe. Yeah, Okabe. Yeah. I was, like, in the the beginning, Chaos Set like, guy is like, just a I have a time. <laughs> the Chaos Set know, guy, which is the predecessor to Steins Gate, has a timetable for how often he has to go into school to pass. Like the minimum required time, and he just sits in his room playing MMOs all day. He's fucking perfect. It's pretty great. There you yeah, go. Okabe. Okabe is interesting because I think immediately he has this sort of charisma about him that comes from mostly the very stellar voice performance he has. But I very much enjoy the earnestness of his character and the sort of way that his facade becomes broken down as the story goes along. And even this early, we get to see how he, it's very funny how he has this like chuny crap where he runs around going, Kurisutina, oh, Inka, and you know, all that uh, stuff. But you can tell yeah. from stuff like the text messages, I'm not sure how many of those you all did, but you can tell from stuff like the text oh. messages and even parts of his monologue when stuff gets uh, more serious, that this is, in fact, a facade that he is consciously doing. Mm. There's moments, yeah. the moments that I think were most interesting in uh, good old Okabe's monologue were the parts in which, where he's like, I have, to, I have to say something now. I need to somehow do mm. something to affect the mood. The, the, yeah. the moments where he's like, what should, I, what should I do? Not in the sort of like, oh, you know, what, should, what is the task I should be doing? But like, what should I do? to make this persona yeah, what seem my character true. Do? Yeah, this, yeah. Like he even, really even early. Wants to, exactly, go. He, sorry, yeah, he, he really wants to seem in control. He wants to put up this facade of like, like, I am not a weak, pathetic human being controlled by mega corporations and all this other nonsense. Uh, I am, you know, this mad scientist who grabs the world by its throat and makes it makes it do what he wants you know like this is who i am even though that's not you know really what he is and i'm really looking forward to seeing if he turns into that by the end of the novel because that's why that's why i think we're going that by well, the I end like of he's the starting to become like, like much that, more right i think he's starting to like kind of learn when to not use the persona because there's that well, point where he kind of pushed kirisu a bit yeah definitely like, like definitely... oh maybe i should apologize and he never did yeah definitely um, but yeah, like the whole reason why he has this, this, this whole facade is to give himself more control. So I'm looking forward to seeing him develop and move past yeah. that like powerlessness because he's putting forward that ideal of like, look at how much control I have. I, I am the master of science, but he really isn't. Um, but I, I hope that he is by the end of the journey. I hope that that's like yeah. what we're going to see. Yeah, I thought that um, was uh, pretty interesting yeah. to see during Carice's lecture. Where, you know, in the beginning, he's putting himself off as this master scientist. And then as soon as he gets into that lecture, yeah. and, you know, Chris, Chris is calling him out, like, what can you tell me about the time travel theories? Uh, and he's uh, just uh, like, oh, well, you see, well, that's a, yeah. Uh, yeah, good question. You see, mm. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the yeah, most interesting, yeah. interesting thing uh, I, I feel about Okabe as the story goes on, and even, even at the beginning is this distinction between how he thinks and how he acts and why mm. as uh, that that the why is more of a important question as the story goes on but he's a very interesting character to pick apart and i think yeah. the points in which we get to see him be the most vulnerable uh mm. I, i'd say on average are with the other character of our that takes a supporting role in our opening and this she may be a bit more polarizing and that's good old sheena mayuri what do what does all uh, everyone think about Mayuri? I know she is a can, can kind I of she, yes, of course you can, Ashley. Mayuri, I would be able to tolerate her a lot more if she didn't have a fucking ending that was terrible. Yes. Okay. Well, that Mayuri doesn't is, matter in this. Mayuri is right 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 but again, that does, but that does not that. matter. So don't talk about like, it. if this it wasn't a visual matter. novel, I'd be much more okay with her existing. To put it another way. Okay, yes, I like her. In the context of the opening, like what does it? What do you uh, think? She's fine, I, except she's fine as like a little sister character, she, and like as like shows a more humane side of Rintaro. Yeah, yeah. Like she gives, she gives her to be a chance to like 
Like except when he takes her bananas and chicken. You know, interact with her. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's that's like the her best moments where she's like, "I bought these bananas to have." For, like, she's just a regular. I person. wanted to eat these bananas. Okay. Yeah, I think she's like, she's I just, bought these she's bananas. Really... Please don't experiment on them. And then five minutes yeah, she's later, really bananas. That way. All these all, all these dudes here trying to do all of these, you know, all these science experiments, and she's like, "No, my chicken. I just want to make yeah. my cosplay." Although I, I I strongly suspect that she's gonna shift away from that. Um, at some point, I hope she does. I hope she isn't just See, this I, one I was target for the whole Zosonte Zosonte earlier. earlier. No um, him, I, I don't know about you guys, but Zasonte and I, we think Mayuri is a character made to die. I don't like I, 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 I see. Ex I know exactly what you mean. Air. I know exactly what you mean. There's, there's no. We don't think there's any way that she's making it out of this sunscreen. I know that. Really don't it's because that to happen. Well, it's because Mayuri's I'm presented as kind of like an emotional crush because we. Yeah, we we she is the person that Okabe is most familiar with, and that he's most vulnerable vulnerable yep. with. God, I can't speak the English language. The way I, I see it, and say it. The way I see it, they're just gonna use Mayuri to just like, I I think you're right. I think she's gonna die, and that's just gonna be like the final nail on the coffin Ugh. that makes Okabe realize shit. This isn't a game. This people can die. I need to yeah, stop I, being. I, I need to stop pulling up my phone and talking to it. Because like yeah, that's the obvious think, esca that's I, the escalation. I, I think right? she's gonna she's gonna die, and that's gonna um, break Okabe into. I mean, I hope she's okay. Okay. Gonna gonna have have that there are risks right. in what they're doing. Yeah, yeah, like that's the obvious escalation of like, apparently being a victim of Okabe's relatively harmless acts of stealing her chicken and bananas, and we escalate that to now I mean, you're getting her involved in the hacking of CERN and all that other stuff, and that'll end in her like assassination. I hope not. I hope not. Um, even then, yeah, showed I like some resistance to does. showing other people this research because even like when they're about to show, it's like, Mickey say, "Are you sure you want to do this?" This is like your whole future. You have your whole future ahead of you, and you don't want to like yeah. fuck this up. So maybe yeah. you should. And those are other okay. great moments of the facade being pulled back for a moment. Yeah. to show how. But Okabe I did notice really that, just thinks. You know, he does. He does say to Karisu, "You know, like you can turn back now," but he never mm. gives Mayuri that chance. She doesn't matter as much to the plot. Well, Maybe. that being said, even though does, he though. doesn't he doesn't do that, but he also <laughs> he doesn't really pull her in. What's happening. Exactly, exactly. He isn't pushing he her isn't away, but she's at the computer screen. Exactly, she's point. like she just kind of at a at a distance course. anyway. Yeah, but when they were looking at the research, she was out of the room. So that's true. Yeah, she is her, her t the type of character that she is is. Yes, it's a little. It's yeah. not quite to my uh, to my taste. She is perfectly Neither. fine, and I, I like I, how I like... she what she ends up being. But that sort of hyper childish sit at the vending machine, yeah. give me a quarter so I can get my toy thing is yeah, it's a little rough. Go yeah, I, I like Mayuri, but I'm not a fan of her character archetype. You know, I'm not a fan of the 16 year olds that have the mentality of a nine year old. And everyone's like, yeah, that's just that's just how people are. No, no, <laughs> yeah, no, 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 not. And it's so it's so overdone. Like I like her, I like her, I like what she does for the story. But the amount of times that she's just like, I don't really get it, but here I am, just wasting a piece of dialogue. It's like, all right, thanks, Good. I guess. Yeah, and I think so, her role in the narrative is very important, and I think that always become perhaps most clear in the in chapters three and four. But as, as is now, I, I had very similar gripes. Yes, Magpie, go. Can I posit something? Because there was something that was going through my head as I was reading. Here's the thing. Mayuri may just be a, a silly character who is fun and doesn't really, does much for the, doesn't really do much for the plot and all that stuff. She might die, but it is entirely possible. See, so here's the thing. In that prologue, in the pro prologue opening, we have a whole bunch of stuff. It ends with a terrible, horrible murder. I'm just saying, as we'll put this out there, if Mayuri ends up being the murderer or complicit in some way, Dude. I would love that. I would love <laughs> that, that so be, much. Because, that would be a great because in the prologue, there's a, there, there are long stretches of time where they are, the two are not together. Okabe and Mayuri are not together because, like, getting a little toy out of a machine, and then she's writing her name on it, and then she loses it mysteriously. And I'm sure that won't come back ever at all in any plot points later. But... Of course not. No. I really... I am so curious. I'm, like, in my head, I'm like, I can put up with the silly, ditzy character 
if we get a payoff for that, if we get a massive payoff where she's like, like a Terminator or some shit sent through the timelines to hunt over me down. Look, I was a hundred years ago. Here's the twist that I'm sweating. I don't think we'll go that far. But here's the I twist am... that I want. I want it to end with. <laughs> I want to end with my with my Yuri going back in time, stealing the Upa from herself because she lost it. Yes. <laughs> my, my theory is that the Upa is going to be like the required component to fix the time machine when it like lands on the on the roof later we on. Need some story. sort of platinum. But we'll see. I I really hope that we get like a huge payoff from that little. I'm sure there's gonna be some payoff. And, and Mayuri I, like I, I meets enjoy herself. The characters. They're they're yeah. good. Like they'll have they're they're good characters to have in this kind of story. Just that one character instead of having every character have some sort of yeah. humor. Yeah. Also, I feel like having a Mayuri who's like gets completely broken by the events that Okabe brings about will be much more of a satisfying payoff than I'm a horrible person, by the way, than just having her die. Like, I feel like if I were like the writer of this story, I would just have her go through trials and tribulations, go from like completely innocent to just like psychopathic by the end. That is Here, like what I the art that I want. I want to go back. <laughs> I so. want to count how many stab wounds Kurisu has, <laughs> and then I want to yeah. count how many bananas they sacrifice. <laughs> <laughs> so every time, <laughs> every, time, every, time it, every time bananas appeared, it was stabbed into Makisa Kurisu. One stab for every lost banana. <laughs> I heard the gel so. nanas so are all nice ones. From the microwave, stabbed into Kurisu's stomach. At two, Mayuri? <laughs> these, stat, these stab wounds are oddly banana-shaped. Which he actually yeah. did. Was she literally killed Uba someone with a banana. Powder, forced Kurisu to swallow it, and it was a small bomb in her stomach. Oh, oh dear God. God. Banana blade. Oh, no. All right, I'm done with this podcast. I'm out. Uh, <laughs> I'd like to raise the <laughs> I'd like to raise the to deep. Uh, so, um, there was a scream in the prologue. What does everyone think of that? I don't know. Are we going to follow this list whatsoever? No, um, fuck okay, you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, be honest with you guys. I turned off all the voices. There was a scream. Myself. Oh, I turned off all oh, the voices too. That's just because I was reading the script. I'm just trying to find if what gender it was. Because I swear I have it written. Yeah, was it? It yes. was a man. Yes. yes, there was a man screaming. Well, well, I think that's Okabe. I think that's Okabe yeah, finding I the body. Yeah, I think it's Ritara. Yep, from the future or the past. Yeah, it could be Ritara from the future. Like, who knows what could fucking happen except for Brett and Ashley? Yeah, I mean, mm. it's yeah, not you guys shouldn't even be here yet. Here's the thing. There are tenants of a mystery. This is not, like, strictly a murder mystery, but there are tenants of a mystery that, like, all the characters involved should be displayed at the, at the side of the mystery and everything should wrap around. So I have to assume the character who screams is one of the characters we've already been shot. You are an um, absolute you... fool if you think anybody follows those rules anymore. I mean, a lot of people it's, do. It's, a lot of people no, do. I'm talking, I, it's like, a fair I'm talking, way to I'm look. Think. I'm not talking about like let's go to Knox and find all the murder mystery rules, but like in good storytelling, uh, it is it is. If more you present satisfying. a question, the answer should be nearby. nearby. Absolutely, I think that if it is not Okabe, if it is just some random dude, I will call horseshit. That's how I feel. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I, it's, I, it's, I, it's, it's I like a of Chekhov's gun. Answered. This yeah, question like, can be answered by just checking the voice performance and checking who did that scream. I'm not going to, though. To um, yeah, like, I'm, if, I'm not going to go that deep this, this play If through. there's a scream in chapter one, that scream is going to belong to someone we know by the end of, yeah. the, of the story. Yeah, or even the chapter. Yeah, like, maybe it's either going to be Okabe or... Like, yeah, maybe like Moaka has a super manly scream. How the fuck hey, do you guys. Want that? Maybe. But yeah, I, I strongly kid. suspect that hey, it's future they'd be like, oh, Mayuri, why did you pull your Terminator minigun out of your arm and kill Karisu? Maybe why would you do this? That's a really manly scream. You never know. You never know. I was going to say it's Mayuri. You think Mayuri was doing the man scream? Uh, yes. I, no. I mean, she's a cosplayer. She can do anything. Yeah. <laughs> I think Mayuri killed Kurisu in the basement with her Terminator gun, and then okay, I was like, why would you do this? I was trying to save her. Wait, what is the Terminator gun? Is that, like, is that the lever-action shotgun, or is that the... You know what? It's whatever you want. It's whatever it's kind of gun you want to be. Sweet. It's <laughs> the banana shotgun. I'm just imagining Mayuri with her lever-action shotgun flip-cocking it. <laughs> uh, yeah, anyway, that's that's my yeah. kind of work. Yeah, okay, yeah, so uh, what, do you, what do you guys think about this email that he sends to the past? Uh, oh, and how no, Lonnie is dead. Looks, like, bad. Like, looks bad. Lonnie dead at Kiniku. Looks bad. That was great. Now does one person want to say so we can hear you? 
<laughs> nope. That's gladly. I gladly. All out there. So this is the part of the story where I definitely started to get invested because this is the part where he, you know, he runs outside, he sends that text, and there's that weird, you know, little interrupt on the screen where it's like, whoa, something just happened. And then yeah, he looks up. Gone. And every, yeah, everyone's gone. Everyone's abandoned, and that's when stuff starts to get weird because Mayuri comes out and she's like, "Dog, what's up?" And <laughs> he's like, and then he screams. Yeah, you, yeah. You, you know, you, you you saw that everyone was gone, right? And, and she's like, "Uh, no." At yeah, first, I was like, did, 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 did everyone just did a lot of people just die? At first, I was like, "Did everyone just die?" I'm like, "Oh no," because it was time travel. Time travel. It was a different it, time, it so like, everyone's just um, gone out of this place by now because of it looks satellite like in the roof. Because of the satellite in the roof, yep. Yeah, I mean, it looks like we're hopping. We've just jumped to a slightly different world that is very similar. Yeah, um, or, you know, once he runs outside, the satellite's not on the roof anymore. It's embedded in the side of the building. Yeah. And that's, like, that's the satellite that's, like, in all the promotional material. Yeah, yeah, yeah and, and in the title screen. It's very yeah. strange, you know, and that's that's definitely one of the answers I'm looking forward to. Yeah, is like, that you know what the hell happened? You know why is why course, is, why is only he remembering? Yeah, that, in the beginning they offer there. like a bunch of to think about by the end until the end of the story, and it definitely does. It's a great way to start off. Yeah, mm -hmm. I certainly think Good the hope. prologue is very well paced and mm, very yeah. ha and contains a lot of things that are relevant. It's uh, not just presenting you the characters it does so in a way that also has a, a lot going for it with the plot and then after the intro we are we are introduced to llama man llama man oh yes alpaca man and let me tell you alpaca this man. scene is oh fantastic. my god yes i love was, the talk i thought they were talking man. to me i and yes, that's exactly so why it's great i like it because it does a lot to set the tone for the kind of things you will be reading and experiencing the alpaca man See, now, part is great you there Yes. Like you think you, you think you're not in the game, but you are. Like what? 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 We are our I, I had we are reality. Problem, you are the game. You know, I, I know. Shocker. Ron, Ronnie has an issue, but uh -oh. what what I didn't like about this part is that you know, after that whole weird thing in the on the empty street, the fact that Myri suddenly has no idea what he's talking about, then he's like, "Well, that was weird." And then he's just not really worrying about it. And then we'll get to this. But eventually he sees Karisu and just loses his mind again. He, it was too Yes, I agree with that. He, it's it's the rewrite. He's flip-flopping yeah. between not giving problem. a shit and it's That isn't out. too inconsistent. What the fuck? Hey, if I was Okabe, I no, would have spent the whole next week going, what I, is wrong with I think these it's, people? Did it's, you not see these people disappear? It's a little more subdued, though, because he does go out pretty promptly with Daru to go investigate <laughs> what was going on. But no, I do know exactly. I do uh, agree and sympathize yeah. with what you're saying here. Okay, uh, okay well, well, lovely, because I don't agree. Like, that... What the fuck? <laughs> People don't just like immediately. Like, Okabe's entire thing is that he has this facade of like knowing what's going on and like. And so when he suddenly doesn't know what's going on, he wants to hide okay, that think, so he doesn't see. I think I'm starting to see Ashley's point of view because, like, I think. Because I think he can. Because, you know. Uh, let, me, let me get my thoughts together. So, yeah, calm down. Mayuri just, you know. She's like, okay, I don't really know what you're, you're talking about, but it was just one little thing. So he's like, okay, I'll just brush that off, think about it later. But then he sees this person who is very obviously dead, but right here, I think that was a much bigger well, thing. It's, it, the, just, the pacing of the information is a little bit of like plot necessity coming before things. So I think the logical thing would have been to have him immediately have the scene with Dari where he goes back to... Uh, Akihabara, yeah. but yeah, this, they have the scene. They have the scene with the alpaca the man. They have the scene with alpaca man in order to serve as a function for you to figure out who Daru is, so you can then go with Daru to Akihabara and you investigate the crash. Big fucking nerd. Yeah. And That's on that, right. Daru, our man Ishida Daru, does not get a lot of a uh, play. I wouldn't say in these chapters. He he yeah, becomes a more, bit more important. Um, in chapter oh, two, guy. but what what did everyone think I, of Daru? Okay, I love I, that we're focusing on a group of fucking hacker nerds. That's great. Hacker nerds, cool. Cyberpunk stuff, cool. Super hacker. 
He's also just a giant pervert, and that seems to be half his screen time. He's so he's great. Again. Uh, I don't know. I'm not, yeah, I'd I'm like not to see a fan more of the super hacking, less of the... It's, like, of the it's actually like... It's... Like... Uh, Hell yeah. I like Daru's he's an interesting out. character, because he's... Yeah. I, I agree, Ashley. That was... But he's, I, he's the one character to go like, whoa, Rintaro, that's not like... You shouldn't be doing that. Until Makisa cool. comes in. Yeah, yeah Rantaro will never listen. He will yeah. never listen. He's one, he's one a character cool. that, that uh, Okabe sees as, a, as like a peer to himself, which is only yeah. really shared with uh, Makise, where everyone else is his friend in, in various ways. But Daru and Makise are the only characters that actively are on his level in terms of being an active part of doing I mean, certain stuff when it comes I, to I just love him because Rintaro's always like, Oh, I am ho in Kilbar. Every time Daru's I'm like, shut the green. fuck up. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah, Daru. Yeah, he's a different breed of nerd, which I really like. <laughs> would you I say one thing. would you say he's a giant one? I would say really giant. Giant. what are you he's calling him fat Magus? No, just giant. Oh, yeah, he's he's just big. Big. I like he's to imagine that. it's all. He's big boned. He's just he's this his arm is the length world. of girls' his torsos. His arm is the, is the length. Um, of the in world. one of the spin-offs, he loses a lot of weight. So tragically, you can't say he's he's just big boned. Oh, shucks. maybe so you are calling him a lot of muscle. I never did. I just one thing: he's a big boy. There's more him to love. One thing he literally described him as being like fat in like his first appearance. The anime this is very ruined fat his character design. What a what a disrespectful what group of Neanderthals. I don't just it, wow. just just Google Daru anime. Not, not I'm, exactly. I'm not doing that. That brings up spoilers. <laughs> his, no his, one thing about Daru. Design, everyone's character design in the anime is a is not as good as the visual novel character design. Uh, yeah, but, well, I mean, yeah, so because they take out the first one, the very interesting. Would be hell they, take the, yeah, they take out the fairly interesting uh, stylistic Texturing. choice of making the the pupils white. What? Hmm? The pupils, <laughs> the the parts that's usually the black pupils. on your eye. Oh, oh pupils! Oh, Gosh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I couldn't make out what you were saying. I mean, it's, it's, it's like not just the controversy of having white people in our games. Like what? I also thought yeah, you said white people. Weird. One thing about Zara that is a little that I took me out of the narrative a bit, and it still does every time I read it, is that his hacking ability is actually absurd. Like, it's great. he yeah, is able to yeah, hack is, an international... To the story. He's able to hack into an international physics association, and it's... He's yes. just able to do it. To be fair, Okabe's is... Okabe accidentally made a fucking time machine from a microwave. Yes, okay. Okabe attached a cell phone to a microwave and it turned into a time machine. <laughs> so every time, you gotta suspend your every disbelief time somewhere, someone but... praises how grounded the science in this story is, I want to smack yeah. him upside the head. And that no, no, I, I'm not saying very science. drastically. I'm just saying how, how they make it sound like as if they're making yeah. sense. Yeah. And in addition to the science, in addition to the fact that you strap a cell phone to a microwave. And that turns it into a microwave. Daru's ability to just it break touched. into international physics associations is a little crazy. Logic yeah, no, doesn't mean shit in this, okay? And this is probably like, the, the there biggest is a, problem that there I have. Is a later part, there is a later yeah. part where all facade of the science seeming to make sense utterly collapses if you have yeah. even the slightest familiarity with how computers work. Huh, and I'm sure you'll enjoy like, that when it comes. Scientific practice. It's like, this is no, the it's biggest thing that I was like, when when they were experimenting and they were doing experiment with a banana, and they're like, oh, it came out all, and it wasn't there. And I'm like, okay, you're a scientist. Let's try and replicate it. Let's set up like a control and a and variables and like science this shit. And I was like, I don't know, put another banana in. Like, isn't that what, what they do? Later on? They do eventually like put another banana in, but it's like. Dude, like, why don't you have this set up to like have follow proper procedures so we can get results? You can. Well, something you can tells use. me that Rintaro isn't a proper scientist. No, he's not at all. He's not at all. Not not at all. Just a I hunch. Mean, just a not... hunch. I mean, no, 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 no. There is a quote from I don't know if it's in these first two chapters, but if it isn't, it's later on. I'm not a scientist. I'm a mad scientist. He's yeah. a mad scientist. Yeah, definitely. The story does like, do well in I, terms I just, of I just, oh, go on. he's not a scientist. He's just really imaginative. Yeah, I don't know. I, I just, I don't like, I, I, it's a personal nitpick of mine that whenever we get the, like, Hollywood, there's this one guy who knows how to build a machine that will, and I'm like, that's not should how science works. about all of the machines they've made made by then? 
Oh my god, I want the TV remote one, the like gun that is a TV. I forgot remote. what they were. I want it. I, I, I know they were when they put a camera on the rotor of a of a helicopter. One's just a, helicopter. One's just a like, flashlight, uh, but it's a lightsaber. Well, yeah. One is a vacuum yeah, and, cleaner uh, that's also. Dry. And it has fake blood inside it too. Yeah, it's just, there a, one that's just a bunch of flashlight. Fake blood inside it for some reason. There's one that's oh, literally yeah. a, a vacuum cleaner that also dries. There's one that's a claymore that's basically just dispenses. Yeah, they're very imaginative folks over there. It's great. Kurisu is the real um, tragedy of the um, of the fucking of the fucking anime art style. She's real. She just yeah, she has, looks so dead has anime. She just has anime hair in the anime. Like it's a lot less. Anime not even that. Like... It just looks like normal ass human hair. No, it like it is fucking as red as like fucking. It's she, like yeah, as she's red a... as like her tie. She's just a brunette, really. No, yeah, I, mean, no I mean, if you're if you're trying that to make that, then she probably life. should have chosen a different picture. Yeah, I probably should have, but all the rest of made her mouth look really weird, and that wasn't the point I wanted to make. <laughs> I think I think the problem here is that they made her look like so dead inside, where her character design has a lot more personality in the visual novel. Well, like I said, I actually I th I always thought from with the pictures I've seen of her, I always thought she was just a person that was emotionless and cold. Uh, that's why I always got. But from, no, like, she's just sassy. She, she's actually just she's, sassy. just. she's got like a ton tons of personality, and I am so happy that she's actually just a human being instead of like an anime character. Yeah. Yeah, and. Spe so this this leads us to Makise being reintroduced into the story, where Okabe has his little panic attack seeing her introduced with uh, back and then Ayala. tries to and, and then he tries to feel her up, and she's like, "Welcome you back, be trying with, to feel me up." Grabby hands and open arms. I honestly, I think what I loved about Karisu and that, oh my god, that is very red. That's really red. <laughs> Speechless. <laughs> All right, so yeah, back to the podcast. Okay, so so what I loved about uh, Karisu in that scene is how like he starts lifting up her shirt, and she's just like, "Uh, really? Dude, is that is that what you want to be doing?" She doesn't just like go on and slap him. She's like, y "You might want to stop that. You might want to stop doing that." J just the just a suggestion, man. <laughs> and one thing I find interesting about her character model is that she purposely has the coat off of her shoulders. And to keep it on, she has to wrap, like, tiny belts around her arms. Yeah. I found that weird, but I guess, you know, it's like just, you know if she wants that, that's her. Yeah, that's her she's comfortable like wearing belts. All that's why her, her, more, her far superior design is her lab coat design. Yeah. Yeah, but, so, Makise is, of course, like, a very, very large player in this story. And her involvement Perfect. is mostly... She she becomes her mo most of her plays in the second chapter where the whole IBN thing comes to a head as well as the whole deal with CERN. But yeah, what do what do what does everyone think about Makise as a person from what we've seen of her this early in the game? As and she is going to be a major say, player. I can I honestly say she is my favorite character so far. She is my favorite character. I love her. She is my favorite character in Steinsgate only to by <laughs> Okabe and a character in a spinoff. In and, the sequel. And, and Maggles, what do, what do you think about so really Kurisu real, I, 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 I think she's fine. I don't know. I, I am like not like, fine. Instantly, I don't know. I am not fine? like instantly attracted to her. Really? I think she's you put, amazing. You put um, good in Maggley, because I also, time. she is also not my favorite I don't know. character. So I, I think she's cool. I think she's a cool character, but she, I don't know, she showed up at Okabe and that was cool. Other than that, she's just kind of been tagging along uh, doing science stuff, which is which is fine. Like, I'm looking forward to seeing how she factors into the largest story. Um, Rini, where do you stand? I don't know. I like uh, her interactions with Rintaro and the gang. Other than that, I don't think she's much on her own. Yeah, yeah, I'm with Rini. Also, um, I'd have to disagree, Okabe, but... Uh. Okabe is really fun because you get to see a first-person Sundari. Yeah. You just get to see him, like, dodging uh, uh, all of like, these thought processes about liking her and it's great yeah like i think he only calls her pretty like twice in like the prologue and chapter one respectively in his internal monologue and then he avoids those words like the plague from that point forward and this is it's great sorry i missed the yeah. first part of the sentence makise as a character is 
I she is best in how she plays off of Okabe, especially mm. in the first like six ish chapters of the game, where the focus is much more on the like group character dynamics. That's yeah. when Makise. I think Makise, on, when she is taken out of that setting and is just a character outside of the context of Okabe, is not as she, she is a very at the very least not as appealing to me. But well, it's just I mean, have the in, interesting in her, character as her, interaction she has with Akabe because yeah, Akabe is the like, yeah, unique yeah. person. And at, but as that role, filling in that niche as the like the straight man to Okabe's nonsense and wackiness, I, uh, their character dynamic is very well realized. It's it's uh, yes. perhaps pro- it is it is probably my favorite relation in the story. Definitely. Yeah, she's fun with you know other characters, but I, I I don't find her like her self to be very interesting to look at or to think about. Um, I'm also like you know I, I feel like we're gonna end up in a situation where uh, Cruz to X Okabe is like the canon sh- ship, and I'm always wary of that kind of thing. Uh, I don't I don't know. I have. I have next to no clue how she factors into the story, and that she's really into into time time travel and someone murdered her probably because she caused some bullshit to happen. Um, but I don't I don't know. I'm curious to see where she goes with her character. Maybe she'll uh, tickle my fancy later on. We'll see. And speaking of we'll cr- check in. Cr- we'll speaking check in of causing thing. problems. Oh no, you can go, Ashley. One more thing. Um, actually. Mm. I wasn't heard that. I'll wait for it. Already and speaking to of one more thing, who <laughs> the next character we meet is, and I'm very, very interested to see what people think of this, because much like Mayuri, I think this character is also... Actually, I think a lot of the heroines are pretty polarizing, to be honest. But very hero, heroine's a loose Ooh. word, because here we have Luca. What does everyone think of everyone's favorite girl? Heroine? Boy, Luca. Um, oh, he's a guy. guy. We just Every skipped time, over John Tider. Someone calls Luca. I'll go back to John Tider. We don't care about Tito. Yeah, right, so what, what do people thing. think about Luca? Luca? Luca is a very good Luca, player. what what is the point of this character? Like, other than just to be trapped but in she's a guy. dick. Which, it's a confuser I mean, dick. It's specifically meant to confuse her dick. I don't... Maybe this is just my personal opinion. Maybe no one else who enjoys this opinion. I hate trap humor. I hate it so much. Like, when everyone's like, ah, oh, they're a trap, but you, you can't be a trap. I'm like, I don't care. I don't care. If someone but wants to identify guy. as a but man you, or a lady or whatever, I guy. don't shit. I don't okay, so I don't enjoy it. Well, why don't we, why I don't don't we see enjoy how, how, character, um, so. how, um, how Luca's character evolves as we go for the visual yeah. fucking Yeah, see, Luca, Luca is... I'm you know, Chekhov's saying... gun. Chekhov's gun. That character is okay. there for a reason. Luca is I know, I'm not, I'm not done. Here's the thing. I like the way that they're being set up as as their character of like they're they're kind of like a protege to Okabe. I enjoy that, um, and I like texting back and forth with him and being like, "You need to practice your sword strokes thirteen times a day" and all that nonsense. I think that's a lot of fun, but the the trap humor is a turn off for me just because of I don't. I know I don't I don't like that kind of humor. I find and it I to guess, be really yeah, awkward I, and weird. I want to level with you because I also hate that humor. I think it is so like reaching for the lowest fruit, very meaningless sort of humor. But the thing I like oh, about yeah. Luca is that Luca is that sort of thing but played straight. So mm. Luca it's yeah. he I actually see a lot of like tragedy in him because he is that character. But when you read stuff like uh, his text messages, and when you go the second time to the shrine and you have that second interaction with his father, you can see that like he was his family like played on the trap thing and like forced him to grow up wearing female clothing. <laughs> and you get the very under you get this undercurrent and that, that this and this gets like doubled down upon as the story goes on that he doesn't like that this is like who he just has to be. They take the fact that he like he is a very he's a very girly boy, right? And there's all those haha jokes, but he it, like his insecurity is very legitimate. And when you read stuff like, "Oh yeah, my sister used to bully me by forcing me to wear female clothes." It's like, yeah, "Oh, I, I didn't that's get a that, little rough." Yeah, that I was in one of the text though. messages. Hearing that now does but, make a lot of sense. But and yeah, this and this it is early and this this becomes you know, more of a thing as it goes on. But I, Magus, yeah. I think you'll be okay yeah. with where Luca goes I'm because they do play it, it straight. They play it straight. Yeah. They play it straight. And, and, and this is the thing. This is, this is the thing. 
like I get that we're we're not at the end of the visual novel, but this is about my feelings. Oh yeah, right of course. Now, I think it's totally yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> like right now, I'm like, oh no, are we going to just focus on this person as a joke character? Like, well, I'm hoping I'm hoping get, get the trans person. You know, what a big joke they are. If we uh, get to like hoping... how that evolves, I'm totally down for that. I love that shit. Well, yeah, what I'm hoping for is that uh, Lukaku evolves into a very confident character. Yeah, yeah. yeah even the fact I mean, that they call him Lukaku is like it's re- that's like that in its own right is like kind of a blow because Ko just Ko means girl, so they're just they're essentially mm-hmm. calling him a girl to his face at all times. It's Luca yeah. has Luca has like this degree of tragedy that surrounds him, and as that comes into more focus, uh, I think I yeah, think yeah. he will be content. One of the things goes. I like about Luca is that he is easily the most effeminate trap I've ever seen. But like, I think like so far from what we've seen, you could change Luca into just a straight up guy who's completely ma- masculine, and it wouldn't really change much so far. I just like that they're not playing. Mm-hmm off of him yeah. being a trap and just throwing in trap jokes left and right. They were just treating it like as he's stuff. he's just like any other character. He's just very feminine. Yeah, they're fairly respect like our the characters the main characters are fairly respectful to him. But you know, yeah. he's a guy. But he's but a guy. he's a guy. But she's a guy. Yeah. That's the humor that I'm worried about. I, I that scene I, it's a turn off. That for scene me. was hilarious. I, but yeah, I just I get you. I, I get you. Like, it wasn't funny because of that's trash. I just found it funny because they kept saying it. Yeah. I mean, it it was it. I found the joke funniest when like they were just saying like bullshit about like the cicadas are still chirping, but he's but he's yeah. gone. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's the kind of humor I like. But like that was the point I laughed before. I like, that, I, wasn't really I like Luca, and I, and I hope they do some great things with them. Yes, but and, and while well, Luca Luca's a g- a good boy, it's it's time to part the waves and make way for the actual best character in this game, and that's one Suzuha. And I don't know that anyone uh, agrees with me. Late. I was just about to Nobody shout. Agrees. I don't know that how Suzuha that anyone is agrees. With me. But she's Suzuha so is silly. Yeah, Suzuha is, is the yellow-eyed one, right? She's she's the she athletic is, thigh girl. Uh, yeah, she is okay, above okay, and beyond you. my favorite character in this game. Oh, I enjoy everything I enjoy about her is her. divine. I enjoy every interaction with her, like to the point where she's like, "Do you need help? Do you need someone to help you beat up some people?" I can do it. I, I can beat up some people. Yeah, she, she's, she's very I'm, strange. I'm she's very strange. Sex someone to death. I like CRTs. You're hired. <laughs> <laughs> and then she just lounges around the shop. It's great. Oh, she's pretty fun. She's great. I love her. She and Susan, Susan has someone. a lot of like mystery around her she's yeah she's the only uh, member her. of the cast that okabe doesn't like know or know about oh, okay. he, all the other characters are either his friends or makise kurisu in which he knows plenty about because she's a published journalist oh. Suzuha just show. shows up and there's a lot of questions about like who she actually is and why she's working at a crt shop and every, everything about just her playful attitude and the the mm. air of mystery that surrounds her just is pretty dang neato. Yes. Can we talk about how she literally says "what's up" in the first line? She says "what's up" in visual novel. <sighs> I don't know why, but that just brings me back to the time it's like uh, back to like Kado Shoujo when Akira's like "Kira's in the house." Whenever there's whenever they break conventions of like just usual dialogue. And just say, and just the dialogue changes to like, "What's up?" I don't know. I always enjoy that. Um, I think the fuck. I had a complaint to make about her. Sorry. Uh oh. How can that be? She's so perfect. Remember. She's perfect. Wait, let me I mean, see I'm pretty different to towards her character, so Today's... I don't really have anything to say on this topic. And she oh no! A bike. Oh, Phantom Grim is here. Hey, sorry about that, guys. Uh, my sister's graduation went way too late. As oh, Grim, no. what do you think of Suzuha, the best character in Steins Gate? <laughs> I mean, she gets better later, I guess. Wow. Well, we're not talking Whoa. about later. How can you improve Oof. upon perfect? Well, yeah, You'll see. Like You'll see. Right Easily, now. it's called Perfect Plus. Okay. So... Um, anyway, Suzuha isn't even the most mysterious character. C- can we talk about Shining Finger? Shining well, finger is the that's most not a part of the story yet, yeah, but sure, let's talk about oh my Monica. Gosh, she annoys me. 
it's just because like people people like her in real life annoy me to death the ones who just send multiple short texts over and over it's fucking annoying Moika is a creepy stalker that is just the truth and okay. I like really do I I like her as the story goes on you I like I grow to like her a little bit more but even at the end Moika does not do almost anything for me to be honest also people who talk super slowly like Moika just has like every personality that I hate in people <laughs> two sides <laughs> Can we I, do, I don't hate I don't hate Moika as a character, but I just have to say her personality traits just annoy me so much. I don't know, I find it well, rather amusing. I, I get what they're trying to do with her as a character, right? Because she's supposed to be like the quintessential weeb and like the worst things about like today's generation, you know, you young uns. She's, you know, she's antisocial and she's just all in her technology and she's got like this online persona that's completely different. But yeah, like that's what mm. makes her so unlikable is she's kind of supposed us, to be. All us youngins just send, you know, 17 text messages to say one thought. Except then there's, <laughs> I like and then her, there's I like people her. like Sometimes me. I do. Sometimes and then I there's do that. people like me who anytime I send a text message to people, it's all like, you know, five paragraph essay, MLA citations. Look, I am the guy, <laughs> at least in Discord for sure, who is like, Post a thought, post a thought, post a thought, wait for response. Post a thought, post a thought, post a thought, like I do not write long paragraphs. Here's the difference just, though, you, you, you wait for a response. I heard that as post a thought. It's true, post it's true. A thought, post a thought, and I was very confused for a second. I post thoughts all day, all right, we know. We know I'm all about like, posting like thoughts. Noise. I like Moika, but I will, find, I will say I did find it annoying every time my phone went off, I'm like, it's probably Shining Finger again, isn't it? I okay, thought it so, to read those texts. I had a good time. Okay, so um, so we need to actually everyone knows. Oh. No, 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 go ahead, Graham. Oh no, I was just gonna say, am I the only one that like actually reads through all of them and is like, hmm, I wonder if there's a pattern. I didn't look for a pattern, but I did read all of them. I did every read time. All. Every time there was a text in this game, I read them and like responded to them. You should. Um, it's very good. It's very good dialogue that it's, just it's is fun. good for characterization. It's just fun. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, was that okay? So everyone knows where her name comes from, right? Yeah. No. What's no, the uh, uh, Okay, you need to shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. He, he needs to be. He needs to be informed. By whom? What? 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 Inform what? then. Who's informing who of what? What's Actually, being informed? Good old G Gundam. Please don't do that again. Oh, G -Gundam. <laughs> Please don't. Do I, yeah. Oh, no. oh no, G Gundam's this hand of mine is is burning. Whatever. Whatever. It's hand of my clothes, my horse and power. It's burning grip tells me to defeat you. Take this, my love, my anger, and all of my sorrow. Shining finger. There you go. It's good. Amazing. Yeah. So before oh, we what, before the plot <laughs> before the the <laughs> fetch quest plot really kicks in. There's one more character that's going to be relative to the story's progression as a whole uh, as we go on, and that is one John Titer. John Teeter. I and actually he has a mysterious man. Sense. And I, well, I want to start by going, did, and I find this, I find the, the, the chances that anyone's going to say yes are quite slim. But did anyone know who John T uh, Teeter was? Because John Teeter, much like many of the things that are plot elements of Steins Gate, are real. Like, they're actually real yeah. things that happen. Well, I did um, extensive research on him uh, during my read through of it. Yeah, but, but and Reginald. It was, it was pretty interesting stuff. I liked how. I liked how a lot of uh, what they said about him in the in the visual novel is exactly how the real John Teeter was. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of that actually. Like, there's John Teeter, there's Sun, there's the the computer. Like, there's, there's a lot of stuff. That is, like, yeah, yeah. The, like, the, I mean, even though a lot of even though a lot of Steins Gate is pretty nonsensical, it's all very well researched. It's mm -hmm. very interesting that they have decided to like like it almost feels like they're saying the like the Detroit become human thing of like this is the future. This is what is going to happen when corporations, you know. Except, except was, the message is probably so less blatant in this. Oh yeah, I would say so. It's not, not quite made by David fiction. It's also not made by David Cage. No, yeah, but like, this isn't like a full on. 
uh, uh, like crazy political satire. Not yet, anyway. And it's Surprisingly, not it won't be ATMs that rise up against us in the future. It will be government organizations. Yeah. But yeah, no, no, I really appreciate that. Like, I thought it was kind of weird at first. But it's cool that they've actually done their research and they've looked in. This is what this is when CERN was founded and this is what it stands for and all that fun stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah John Tito. Yeah. And an thing to note. Okay, no, continue. I was just going to say, Teeter isn't much of a character at this point, as much as it is just an element of the plot that functions as another mystery to be solved. But it, the relevance of that character and the the fact that you think about them and who they are and where they are and what's going on and why the dates are not no longer accurate to what Okabe knows, which is, of course, what the real world is, that John Titer came in 2001 or w w whichever it was. Uh, th those are all important. important. And those are all things that are important to keep in your mind and think about as the story goes on. Mm hmm Yeah. So, the real world. But what is note, the real world? An important thing to note is that all of the Tita stuff that's mentioned in the plot that matches Okabe's memory um is the real life version yeah, of john right. peter um that's like what's used as the base so they had a lot of creative freedom because they only had to match um like the Tita stuff um like in that version while like right, the, in the stuff that the like is happening in the now version yeah while the stuff um, that's happening in the now is entirely creative liberty that's cool which that's gave cool. them a lot of freedom and yeah. was a very clever thing to do hmm. Yeah, so now now that the cast has all been rolled in, and it's a fairly, well, it's a large enough cast anyway. Did we talk about uh, Ferris? Did we talk about Ferris? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, be it's because the, st uh, the, the story, story starts, the, the story, okay, wait, wait. The story starts, and then we get introduced to I Ferris. So. Like, the fact that so. starts, but, but right. yeah, okay, no, look, no, we've fair been enough. Before we, shut up, shut up! Before we talk, before we start the, the, the like, focusing in on the bro. plot, we should talk about ferris and i i wouldn't be i wouldn't be sad if if we didn't but yeah ferris nyanyan she's a cat anyone got anything to say i am not a she's big really fan good. of she's ferris good. i really don't like ferris almost at all i love how we started talking about the cat girl as soon as um ronnie has just fucked off space ronnie get back here ronnie we need your expert opinion on cat waifus time so yeah here, i don't like ferris at all so doing. someone say something good about it i figured if we were going to start talking about ferris I would uh, have Ferris join the podcast. Say hello, oh. Ferris Nyan Nyan. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. That was it. That was one Nyan. So it's not quite Ferris. It's half of Ferris. actually five. The mic just didn't want to pick it up. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, um, no, but, but Ferris, yeah, someone actually talked about Ferris. Ferris is a cutie, but um, uh, I don't so. for me, the cat girl lover. Um, it, it, it almost, it almost shames me to say that, uh, after getting to know Ferris, can't fucking stand Ferris. Good, good, I, good, I good. Well. I hate Ferris so much. Horrible. What the fuck? Why well, is it going to say, okay, but Ferris is bullshit? No, this is a double yeah. standard. No, so it's bad. really not, but I can't talk about why yet, because we're not on Ferris's arc. I but think, yeah, I can Ferris... say that I hate Ferris a lot. Anyone have anything good to say about Ferris? Yeah. I, no, look, I, I like, can say okay, I do, I do. I have a nice thing to say. I enjoyed that she basically played Okabe into getting into a game with him. I hate and then, it. like, you hate that? You hate, I hate that. that she it annoys Okabe? me so. Well, because, like, well, well, cause, okay, so, I mean, like, if, if I was, if I had to be either Ferris or Okabe, I would be Okabe. Because the thing is that Okabe, he has this, like, Wikipedia of his whole fantasy in his head and everything he says comes from that wikipedia and then he's yeah, talking and, and then Ferris like, comes in and just spins it. it all that's what's fun the table says random shit and he's just like god fucking that's what's fun because she's there just are being a there dick. are rules she's ferris follow the them worst, the worst kind of role player but also the best in that she she's just like taking, oh yeah let's talk I, about the fucking demon swords now and the like fucking she's demon she's case. she's taking his ideas and running with boys really see like when you're She's like role playing with someone, and but it's him also hate them. yes, yes, absolutely, and that's what I find interesting and engaging about it. I love watching them go back and forth, and I want to see how long Okabe can like keep up with her. 
because that's what's that's what's really fun and see if he tries to like do the same thing to her which he kind of does in one of the text messages i think so the yeah, 13 he, he, play, hey. he plays along he plays along with yeah. her in the text messages but like in real life yeah. he obvious he just wants to stop existing yeah. hey my well, hair is out that is to, to say back. to say one thing kind of good about ferris is that that is what their dynamic is and that's it, it, it's, it's serviceable it, it's them one-upping each other with their yes. like it, it, trying to one-up yes, really it. it's, it's them trying on, to one-up them each question. other with their with their varying shunibio nonsense yes reginald yeah. how, how many of y'all expected mayuri to be the other one Oh, the other cat girl. I didn't, realize, I didn't, I didn't even realize she was. I didn't, I didn't realize she was the other one until she made it very clear. Yeah, she was. Yes, I didn't realize it was her until they said. Also, I'm Mayuri. I know. I love it. She got the eyes. She got them dead eyes, though. <laughs> Come on, guys. I probably, I probably should have realized from the eyebrows, actually. Yeah, she's got those horrible it dead eyes. Good lord, she's great. There. I don't so, know why. Anyway, I, mean, I can actually yeah. see. I can actually see that Brett has preempted a very important um topic discussion, doing through a very clever meta means of doing so, um, because he can't fucking spell Ferris's name. And just well, I can't Ferris. spell a lot of things. You'll notice I can't Ferris spell like the word satellite. Oh I can't spell the word computer. Like this is this is this. Is, none of this is anything. How did you but, write it like that? F E R I S. are talking about. It's like she's a Ferris. No, no, it gets worse. Okay, so. So the correct way of spelling it is F A R I S. Yeah, Ferris. Yeah, that's how you spell yeah. it. He because Ferris every time help. I see the word yeah, in real up. life, yeah. it's F E R R I S. I'm gonna stop I have a question. Okay? Why, why are we talking bullying. about the spelling of a word on a Discord it server for people listening? Yeah. Yeah. Why do we talk about pictures of anime that no one can see but people post in the freaking Discord? Everyone, shut up! It all. Everyone, shut up! The opening for the pointless remake of Steinsgate Zero, a uh, Steinsgate, Steinsgate Elite just came out, or came out like a few weeks ago, and in it, they spelt, they like wrote all the, wrote all the characters' names in English instead. There's just a lot of they spelt Ferris's virus? name like this. Like, virus. Because has anybody actually watched the anime or no? No, I have. Um, okay, in the anime, they, instead of Luca, it's Ruka. Well, that's yeah. just funny. Uh, no. Well, that's just that's just that's just, that's just, that's just because that's you know the animation. conjoined L and R consonants. L and R, yeah. yeah. They, they did and, like they got the go ahead from the VN devs to make. So, so, they they get, get, so why, why are we names of Faris out? Why are we nitpicking about the spelling of Ferris when we could be nitpicking that bread completely skipped over in search of an IBN? I, as a matter of fact, didn't, and was going to talk about that, but then someone yeah, went, was WHERE'S FERRIS?! And, and me, then I had to I skip about it. In fact, I think it was you! Bearing. But anyways, yeah, the main plot of these <laughs> chapters is the gang looking for a computer. It's them looking Woo! for an IBM 5100 because good old John Titer talked about it and Okabe got interested. This, of course, being after Daru kind of tried to maybe sort of hack into CERN because John Titer said they were evil and Okabe believed him because he's Okabe. Uh, yeah, so much of, the, much of this I mean, portion of the story... Right, so. Yes, oh, much of this portion of the story... completely retarded his, his hacking skills are? We already did. We, we've already we done already that. Did, we already did, as a matter of fact, that. Austin. But did we, yeah. did we already talk about Forrest, the opinions on Forrest? Because I didn't give mine. Yeah. Oh, I thought we did that pre-podcast. <laughs> well, you guys made, no, you guys made it barely clear that you guys hated her. I don't exactly mind her all that much. I love her. She's great. I, I, think, I think she's hilarious. I think Wait, it's oh, dumb man. hilarity. Yeah, seeing her play off of Okabe is really fun. I like yes. seeing characters they perform were, obscure it, variants of psychological warfare on each other. It works well as a job. It has to. That's such a good way to. Yeah. <laughs> Obscure forms of psychological warfare. I agree. I love that yes. shit. Yes. Um, but I think it also has to do with her job, where she has to work with the with her clients, and by do, and in order to do that, she also has to work with the bullshit that Okabe gives her. She's a good yeah. improviser. Yes, she's really good. good at she really loves doing it. Though. Oh my like, god, I want to play. I wanna, oh my god, I want to play game fiasco with. Okabe and and Faris and Kusu and just see where that goes. Uh, nobody knows. Let's do it. Guys, what about the Ferris Cup? Oh, <laughs> the Ryanet Ferris Cup? You mean the Rennie Holds Skip Cup? 
You mean the oh we're not God. there yet and you keep skipping ahead in the story cup? Yeah. yeah it's like four hours away from now. It's like four, four hours, hours. Yeah, four hours away. Yeah, about that. Like, I'm over exaggerating. Uh, yeah, we're looking for an IBM for some reason because John Peter was like, you should get a computer. Well, um, I think the whole IBM thing, thing was anyway. because Moeka was first like, hey, have you seen this kind of thing? And so that's, that's what started the well, moment. Yeah, in the... In the second world line, the new John Teeter had not yet mentioned the IBN by the time Okabe yeah. went in search of it. Yeah. So yeah. something, yeah. so something that I I think is a, a fun element of tapping into the mystery is keeping track of who knows what about the IBN and why. So most of the general public does not know what the computer is. Daru does not know what the computer is. Yeah. But uh, of course, John Titer does. And Moeka does, for some reason. And Suzuha also knows what the IBN is. And in fact, she tells Okabe what it does before he even hears that from Titer himself. So keeping so that's, that's another layer of mystery to Suzuha. Well, yeah, but so an important be like a retro PC nut, and that kind of extended into the CRT thing. So yes. I don't think that's anything too much to jump on. I'm not saying it is. I'm just saying that an interesting an thing that helps with diving into the layers of the narrative as the story becomes more convoluted is keeping track of who knows what about the IBN and why, where it is, why it is the case, and yeah, who is able to explain the things about it. It's one of the things yeah. that is an, an inconsistency between Okabe's memories of how the things were and how the world suddenly is that drives his push to do so, his push to exactly. keep looking into the different things. Also, um, an old, wasn't it an old lady that donated it to the shrine? No, they never specified old. They never oh God, really specified family. Who it was? It? But yeah, time okay. travel probably, probably some time traveling. Yeah, like you but, should definitely give this to Kabe when he shows up. Well, because the person specifically gave them the the instruction of, if a young man comes by and asks for this, just give it to him. So yeah. obviously, that's never going to come back in the plot. Obviously yeah, yeah, not. Who gives it? Who, like, doesn't matter. Yeah, who but cares? But before Okabe it's like finds... this is a time travel story or something. Uh, but before sure Okabe so, actually if, if finds the computer, sure. he we first have to reintroduce uh, Makise into the story. Uh, through yes. through the end of chapter one, we've we've since lost the plot entirely. But through the end of chapter one and her reintroduction into the story, which is a scene that I like a lot. I like how Makise comes in and we go through this whole sort of arc in which she is very excited or and very superior she has her you know uh like thought control. games with okabe but then freaks out and runs away in the end it, yep. it's very yep. it does a lot to it, it shows a lot of layers of who she is in just a small moment and of course this is her reintroduction as going forward She's into chapter two character. she becomes a pretty consistent character that's important to a bunch of things well, it makes sense why she'd run away, because this this uh, time travel bullshit is challenging her entire worldview, everything that she believed about science. Yeah, let's, let's not forget the fact that at that whole talk about time machines, she's like, first of all, let's just talk about how time travel is full of bullshit. Mm. Like, yeah, exactly. Right? It, it Exactly what Grimm was saying. It breaks down uh, certain fundamental beliefs she has formed about how science and physics are expected to work. Yeah. Which given her profession. I mean, this is an ongoing theme with, with all of the characters throughout the first two chapters. Um, at least the, well, the main ones, the ones that are involved in the actual plot of the game, is that they go from like, this is my constructed worldview, or this is this is what I'm into. And then by the end of the second chapter, they're like, this is deeper than we thought it was going to be. Physics doesn't work. Research in institutions are trying to control the world. Like all of these paranoid things that everyone's been like pushing the back of their mind or trying to reason around. Are like brought to the fore, which I think is really fun. Um, the game is very kind of aggressive about shaking that up. Like, as you said, um, Kusu's arc of going from skeptic to, well, maybe this can be a thing, is like one scene. It's not the entire novel, uh, which I thought was really cool. Shaking up the status quo. But to be fair, yeah. she does deal with a lot of that by herself. Like, she disappears for a little while, and I think that's yeah. her coming to terms with it. But Megas had a good point with that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah right. and I appreciate right. that they. I appreciate I just, how they respect the uh, the reader that they allow her to do that, and you could figure out, you know, she what was going on, how she thought about various yes. things, and what led her to be, what led her to what led to her reintroduction into the narrative. 
yep, which yep, comes yep. around to, and of course, do. now yep. the actual fetch quest to go run from place to place and find Woo! the IBN, which is a little... Uh, I think the pacing of this little section is a little long. I think... I mean, it, there was no real other way. The steps are important. The steps are important, but it, the way they're presented... It, it's it's mostly the way it is in uh, to this part of the narrative is just looking and giving all of the characters who showed up once a second scene until we ultimately end up with Lukaku in back at the shrine. Yeah, looking for a combo, exactly. Peter. Mm -hmm. It just feels aimless, right? Because they're trying to figure out their next step, and they could have done that in a better way, like the writers could have. But it well, does. Feel it. Well, it's. I mean, the point is that we're getting everyone involved. That when yeah. shit goes down. Uh, the government would be like, okay, so Okabe told to all of these people, let's go talk to them and find out what he's doing. Like, something like that. Um, it's an excuse to get all these random characters involved in the grander plot. I, at least that's that's what I think is going on. Yeah, that, um, it, it's, it just yet. is a further weaving of the cast yeah. into the narrative. The weaving together. And of course, I mean, of course we have moments that. like the freaking Rynet tournament that uh, we talked about. It was very it silly. Just, just slays me. I'm so glad he just lost, though. I'm so glad that we didn't like. He was just. It was just. He was like, "I'm going to win with my brilliant strategy." I lost. I Wait, how do I spin this to my advantage? How, how did I think I was going to win this? Yeah, yep. Yeah. And then he spins it completely around. Um, he goes, uh -huh. I never fun. said if I beat you, you will tell me. I said, I said if I played. <laughs> yeah, stupid. Great. Yeah. But, <laughs> but everyone's like, like, oh my god, you're such a dumbass, but such a genius. Yeah, pretty much. The madman. Mad yeah. Dumbass, though. We get introduced to to uh, Luca's dad, who I think is a massive creeper. <laughs> Freaking. He does seem dude. pretty creepy. The guy talks about how like he loves dressing up his son in women's clothing, and it's yeah. like, man, your Luca's dad creeps me out. Like, this should See, be I illegal. That, also, I I mean, funny. it shouldn't be illegal, but that's just because of other. Uh, just how Rintaro comes in, he's like, starts bowing, like, please, sir, may I please partake of your IBN Flifty 100? He's like, sure, but I think you yeah, want. Sure, yeah. He's like, wait, just like that? It's like, yeah, yeah in spite of his um, odd, some, some weirdo has born as well. In spite of his odd relationship to his son, I like that he's just a pretty much that. Other than how he treats Luca, he's pretty much just a normal dude. And he's like, yeah, sure, computer, yeah. take it, sure, whatever. Yeah, sure, take it. I'm I'm with Red on this one, and I actually have this pet theory about Luca that I'll probably bring up again later when we get around to Luca's arc, because um, oh, I don't shit. want to spoil it. Damn it, I'm, I, don't, I don't want to spoil it, but it's such a good You're spoiling theory, that I think that even has an arc. No what? spoils. I know well, that's why it? I'm not bringing it up. The characters usually have arcs. Later. Characters usually have arcs that they go through in stories, otherwise that. that All I know is that everybody needs to do a much better job of not mentioning things that will eventually happen. Yes, yeah. I concur. Guys, it yeah, doesn't nerds. matter. I, nor I does the anything. anime matter, nor do a lot of things matter. Yes, but, yeah, but this... It doesn't matter, though. It's a fucking time travel story. That's basically a given. Well, all I care about is the fact that Chris too has a great scene head out pretty... Where they're like carrying a little, little box with the IBN in it. This is great. It's adorable. Yeah. She's I, very cute. I like that she's unathletic and is a loser and can't carry a box and is dying. No. It's pretty Neither good. of them could it's really carry great. the box on their own. They're both. They're yeah, like... they're both losers, and that's that's amazing. Yeah. So it's great about it. I love that it's a bunch of nerds. Which led to a strange moment um, when they bring the computer back. And Suzuha gets very angry at Makise breathing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She does, like, doesn't she? Fucking, she really hates Makise for some reason. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Am I the only run, one that didn't read that as hate? Um, it seemed to be more like kind of confusion. No, yeah, she was, she was pretty angry. <laughs> I read it as anger. Angry huh. at confusion or... No, I read it more as like just fascination. Like maybe there's something going on there that we're missing because she just was like focused maybe on. Maybe she's a lesbian. Everything. Maybe really, we're all that's what lesbians that. do. That's what lesbians do. Whenever they see a girl they like, they just walk up to them, get two inches away from their face, and just go. <sighs> well, I mean, I've met, I've met my fair share. She introduced herself, guys. Think about that for a it's second. She knows Chris's name. That isn't really too odd. Karisu is a 
published scientist? Yeah, but Who could I knew her? not really a third, and like nobody recognizes her. So well, that's actually that's actually happened a few times that uh, Amane has known someone's name without them ever telling them that. Suzuha does know an awful lot of things. I mean, she gets your email address. She she knows what the IBM does. She, she the, the mystery of Suzuha is the fact that she is that you know she is she so comes out interconnected and Amane, yeah she comes out of nowhere. My primary suspect number one. For what? For stabbing Makuse? I don't, I don't okay. know. <laughs> she I just, don't she know. just is oh, your suspect or something? I think she is a suspect of anything. She, 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 she going to get me. Anytime anything I, happens, I'm on a top suspect. She's yeah, also I mean, not I even cute. Either I want to slay you. Amane or Moeka, one of those two, I reckon, is a certain agent. I, I yeah, don't they're know which, the most mysterious for sure. But one of the two of them for, for sure is a fucking certain agent trying to get the IBN before... Okabe does. Yeah. Um, that's, probably that's the Moeka. Theory. Probably Moeka, actually. I, I've leaned a lot to her. Well, why do you think yeah, it's seems much more There's like a There's three people like, in this chat that are just, like, sweating because, because we're talking about things they probably already know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, um, um, one is significantly more look, look, for the skill set of a secret agent sure. than the other. Sure. Hey, we're trying to yeah, my up. That's something I'm good at. I'm good at beating people up. Let's go beat people up. Yeah, yeah. I Luka. mean, Susan has the qualities more of like a, a, a either a freelancer or a resistance fighter than a, a corporate like plant, uh, if you will. I think Moeka fits that bill a bit a bit more closely, but we'll see. Well, maybe they're um, I don't know. I don't know. We don't fucking know at this point. But uh, I, I suspect at least one of them will have ties to sign. Hopefully both. Yeah, Hopefully. yeah and, and that I, goes I really with... hope that we'll get some, like, actual CERN. I hope that CERN isn't just, like... Like a dummy? A like, a, like a red herring? Or, no, or no, no, not a red herring, but just, like... Um, I'm trying to think of a good example, but, like... Oh, no, the CERN employees are here to take this away and just... Like, yeah, there, there's no, groups. like, there's no tangible, yeah. like, person you tie, you tie the group yeah, with. Yeah, yeah, right, right. It's just CERN are the bad guys, so we should hate them because they're trying to take away your privacy and they're stealing your information. Like, uh, great. So should I? Should I, I, I should do that already? The I mean, yeah, they really feel like a scapegoat. In making this comparison or not? Sorry. Because if you'd read Chaos Head, you'd know how this series tends to treat like the antagonists. Uh, I mean, I haven't. I haven't well, read we any didn't, of so. those. So. Wow, what a surprise! People reading the second entry in the series first. I don't, uh, I don't know. I mm. haven't heard much about those, so I haven't read them. <laughs> Everyone's yeah. like, they aren't the, the ones that are getting overwhelmingly positive reviews on Steam. Much yeah. like the Infinity Stanky series. Stanky is the one that had a yours. good anime. That's why all this shit happens. Wait, didn't Chaos Head or Chaos Child have an anime? Chaos Head had good. a very bad anime. It was an atrocious anime. Chaos Head's that's... anime is worse than the one hour. What happened in Chaos Head at the start of Chaos Child? That's no, wait, how bad I, Chaos Head's anime. Is. I didn't know that either of those had anime. I'm pretty sure I was thinking of Robotics Notes. Robotics Notes also has an anime that's very mediocre, but is really weird because it tries to cut out all the connections to the other elements of the series. When Robotics Notes is very interconnected to the rest of the series, and it ends up with something really weird. It's also the only way you can consume Robotics Notes in English as of present because God hates you. There you go. And yeah, everything changes when we get oh. a tip from Ferris. <laughs> yes, Ferris. <laughs> Ferris sets the latter arc of the uh, story in motion. And mm. to what Magus was saying uh, when he was talking about his theories and who knows what, like further, further raising suspicion is of course Moika's yep. flurry of obsession as soon as she finds out that Okabe has the IBN fifty one hundred in his possession. Can I have it? Mm. Honestly, I think that was. That was really dumb of Okabe to tell her that he has yeah, the idea. Yeah, I feel, yeah, yeah. I feel yeah. It was. It was. Because he doesn't know what he's doing, right? He's, he <laughs> says he's a secret agent. Here's the thing. He says he's a secret agent. He says he's a mad scientist. But he doesn't practice those things. But he likes to tell people that he is, right? He's the guy who would join a resistance to like overthrow the government and then go to every bar being like, I am a secret resistance fighter. Look at this cool gun I have. Like, oh yeah, Ryu okay, he's Ryuji exactly from Persona here. Five. He's Ryuji right. from Persona Five. He's he, like, he's... hey guys, we're part of the Phantom Thieves. <laughs> we're the Phantom Thieves. He, he, he like, just runs around like I am a secret uh, agent. Yeah. Don't tell anyone. I'm like, a that's his, that's that's gonna um for at least probably the first half or two thirds of the story. That's gonna be his, a Phantom Thief. Pretty much, 
um, which is fine. Good on him. But yeah, he's 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 weaving a web around himself. He's not because uh, obviously not... like yeah because obviously like a big theme of this is surveillance, like the main menu and 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 a, a lot of the a lot of the stuff that you see in the UI. Like even when you pause the game, the way that the um, the borders of the screen close in looks like a like a camera, like you're taking a picture or you're looking at someone through a through a camera feed, which is really cool. I really like the UI design. I could like I have like a whole essay on like how Someone good the UI, UI design is. Design here. Uh, Zero maybe it's the menu more than the UI, but the p- point is like I it's all chance. supposed to remind you of surveillance and control, um, which I think is really cool. And yeah, Okabe doesn't get this. He is being observed, but he doesn't really understand the full lengths of what he's gotten himself into. I mean, uh, I can... Do all of so, you have the Steam version? I do. Yeah. I do. I have the Jazz version, and the UI is amazing. Okay. Um, I have the, I I have the PlayStation yeah. Vita port. There you go. What's up, Ashley? I don't mind. Um, Brad, make sure to cut this out of the audio recording. Uh, yeah, hey, well, hey, yeah. Austin, awesome. I'm going to send you a fucking torrent. Or just don't say it. I'm in fact calling the cops right <sighs> Reading now. Reading the old version. Why? How rump. Anyway. Well, not yeah. well, not wonderfully, completely irrelevant <laughs> note. Uh, Where are we? The, the, well, we're actually at the final leg of the story, in which, with the IBN fifteen hundred and Makise Kurisu and Daru and De Mayuri all in hand, the gang is able to hack further into CERN and confirm that they are doing some pretty nasty stuff. They are, in fact, find out doing human experimentation. Report. Error: Ronnie is dead. Yeah. All that fun stuff. Error, Error mismatch. Yeah, this is Ronnie cool. Is dead. Look, so at, um, look at Jellyman Report. Yeah. So there's, really there's something I'd like to bring up about the Jellyman Reports. Um, it's either a plot hole or it's even more horrifying than it seems. So they say, I, I can't remember if they mention it or not, but I think they say they don't like have a way to fix it to like the Earth's position. Because like, you know, the Earth is moving through the universe yes, incredibly fast. The, 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 the Jellyman... The, the Joey men show up in like random ass positions because they can't, yeah, exactly. They can't account yeah. for the spin of the earth. Yeah, but like, yeah, they can't account for the spin of the earth. But the earth is also going around the sun like really fast as well. So they've probably killed like thousands more this. people. They do talk about that. Okay. In chapter three. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, mm-hmm. really? Okay. See, but yeah, they probably killed thousands more people than. And that's cute. So, what did yeah, you think we'll about, about the, the escalation? Of, what did you think? What did you think about the escalation of the narrative? Because of just I finding like out what the stakes. Doing with it? Well, yeah, the the stakes very quickly raise from yeah. um, mysterious murder mystery to going to, back to hang about your friends to international global conspiracy. This company is killing people. In time travel. It's a classic, right? Like a bunch of kids stumble on a government conspiracy. We're way in over our heads. What do we do? That is like such a classic story in like mostly in in fiction involving younger kids though. Um, so I'll be interested to see where they will take it with like a group of college students. I actually well, they're eighteen and nineteen. Point is, like okay. these sorts of stories are usually like uh, like there's a country town and the kids. You know the the like Steven Spielberg is it kind of stories. They like, find some alien and they have to learn to communicate with it. Um, but now things. it's but yeah, Stranger Things kind of vibe. But this is with like older characters, so it can be more violent and uh, and, and, and much higher stakes. Just seeing um, that picture that was, of the dead body, that was cool. That was cool. It, I like it. it. I liked it. They it's it haunts me. That was Magus like that was so <laughs> quote Magus. It was cool. I liked it. Dead bodies, cool dead yeah, bodies, jellyfied bodies. bodies, cool. Continue. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Meg has made another really good point there, though. That like, it's really interesting seeing this conspiracy unfold and like having that come up against like parallel with Okabe's worldview, right? Mm Because he's like, because we don't even know. Like, we know that he's probably pretending about the organization, right? Because you know, you look at his phone; it's off. There's nothing going on. But the people around him are only mostly sure that it's bullshit. Versus, mm. you know, now we've got this other stuff going on, and it's yes. weird for everyone to kind of see he's, that parallel. It's very self-aware. 
his fantasy is becoming reality in a sense. Exactly. Yeah, his yeah. fantasy of being a spy and and affecting the world and being a mad scientist is slowly becoming a true thing that exists and he doesn't and so, want it to be true anymore exactly and we're gonna watch him cope with that cope with I the noticed. reality of all his wildest dreams being real and that is what excites me about the story that's a really funny thing to say actually because the dreaded bringing chaos head again is going to occur because oh, chaos head is come on now don't. Isn't it isn't a spoiler though? Well, like, like saying something that if something is going to come up again, like no, no, I'm not saying something's going to come up again. It's it's interesting for Magus to say like the idea of like delusions becoming reality or becoming closer mm -hmm. to reality, considering that's much more of a focus of Chaos Head than Steins Gate, and it's. I mean, like, maybe I'd enjoy that then, but. Over. I, I was just uh, we'll see. like think about how. I always thought the jellified bananas were just, I was like, that's a really weird thing. It's a silly thing. And then once it's brought into a <laughs> human context, it becomes 10 times horrifying. Yeah. Exactly. He, right? yeah. I don't remember what specifically they said, but my assumption was that because during the process, you're like put into a black hole and like compressed. Is that, is that what exactly they talk about, they, Okay, so people? they talk about this a lot in, they talk more about this in chapter three. So we'll talk right, more okay. about we'll this next. That some micro, yeah, yeah that, that's my assumption is that you're like, years. Is it is it these people will be like put through a black hole and then and like compressed and then like a like a rubber band like sprung back into place? Except we'll now you've got a bunch of talk more about that or, during, like next time is, we we have. I suppose that the gel idea. man is actually Mayuri getting revenge for her bananas. I hope so. I hope so. I hope she is. She is a yeah. world. Turns more. out now she has the yeah she has the powers of jellification. Yeah, you know I'm she, really excited to see her. She is avenging her bananas. I'm enjoying the science of it. Um, anyway, because I can't, can't wait to continue further and, tomorrow. As you know, I'll, I'll like... And with that kind of being the round, rounding out to the end of the second chapter, um, I just want to know. I want to know for the people who haven't read it, which is which is uh, don't know where the story's going, which is most people here. Most what do you us. want? Uh, what do you want from the story? Slash where? Slash where do you think <laughs> it will go as it continues Vegas, into okay? the later chapters? Yeah, I'm I don't. I guess Max is awesome. I always sound like the worst person when we get to this, because I'm always like, everybody is going to die and it's going to be great. But like, I don't want everyone to die. What I want from the story is for every single character to be completely broken by the end of it. That's what I want. I want them to be like, oh my god, Megan. Here's here's reality, and it's just destroying them. That's all I want. Let's go. I, I want there to be really... a lot of people just going back in time to stop something from happening and then fucking and then, it up and even then more. And I then, want, like, oh, how I do we even? That, I just want that yes. to be happening continuously throughout yes. the story until it's all I want, fucked. I want to get messed up, and it, you know, it might end good at the end. You know, we might we might have that. It's not enough ending, but I just want every. I want there to be a point in the story where every single character is like, we have been irrevocably changed by these events, and we don't know how to come back from this. That's what I want. I just want some interesting, like revelations or, I, or ideas to come because like already the jelly is a very interesting idea and the, and the way they're going with time travel is already interesting to me so i just i don't know i'm i'm interested to see where it goes it is an interesting take on time travel yes um because what they say it's, it's like i don't know how how did john Titor explain it how he explained time or it's like it's not exactly time travel oh my god i have it's it right just, here uh oh, cool. Cool. hold on uh, your soul can clean to preconceived notions of time. Time does not simply run from past to future like a car. Uh, the laws of causality do not allow contradictions to occur. The result of an event, the effect is changed. The event itself, the cause, also changes to prevent a paradox. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, so that's, yeah. I found that extremely interesting because time changes reality to which make sure it makes sense. Yes. Um, which really, like, if we're dealing with time travel in most fiction compared to this, like, the strangest thing about time travel in, in Steins Gate is that Okabe remembers the change. Yeah, um, he's the actual, only one too. Like, everything changing I don't think is particularly strange, but the fact that he remembers it uh, Im implies, John Tita said it implies that he has time traveled or is a time traveler, um, which is fun. Yeah, this has some of one of the uh, most interesting takes on time travel I've seen uh, in a story since that since that one take in Doctor Who where if you go back in time and stop anyone slash yourself from dying, the universe will just keep trying to kill you until you are dead as you it's are supposed great. to be. It's great. And it's a life is strange situation. 
Damn. Uh, except yeah, it's, it's time except travel. Less team melodrama and shitty dialogue. <laughs> it, it's time <laughs> travel where yeah. the only thing you can send, the only thing that goes back in time, are suggestions. It's only text right. that you are conveying to someone, maybe with the hope that they might be able to do what you want them to do. There, it's and, right. and that and part of the intrigue is seeing how something that is so little can be so meaningful. But of course, mm. that's that's still a ways to come. And I will say the game, the, like the game, already in like the first few minutes is already set up, or the first like thirty minutes is set up such great mysteries that will send us going throughout the entire story and i can't wait to see like the resolu the re resolutions to all these kinds of mysteries and i'm sure they'll do it in a fairly well done way down for it let's go i'm down for it yeah i'm right. i'm excited right right so does Let's anyone have any uh final thoughts they want to put out there uh, before we was, clean up here uh, i'm glad this is like the second visual novel i've decided to look at <laughs> It's a good one. Um, it's a it's it's so far a really good one. Oh man, I'm looking forward to getting on to chapter three as soon as we're done recording. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I've, already, I've already gotten like a bit into chapter three, and so far what I'm what I'm seeing is very interesting, and I'm sure we will have a lot to talk about next time. Right. All right. So pending cool. any thoughts that uh, any um, remaining thoughts that will be it for us. This has been uh, actually. Oh. oh, oh, oh. I object. <laughs> Who's objecting? <laughs> Grib. I object, Your Honor. Please, they, please, please, please give your piece. I can overruled. Jerk. Uh, now, we've got to like, consider, too, like the fact that all of this could be in his head. He's worried it's in his head. What if it all is? Eh, I don't think it is, but it could be. That, that would be a really shitty story. Story. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. I have played too many novels recently where they in their head are all... Bullshit! I want a solid story, and uh, I think this science. I mean, there's one that. game for me that made that made it work, and that was Hellblade. But in terms of this, that would just be a shitty way to end it. You know it's like I've going noticed? like, oh, and it was all a fucking dream. Here's well, what nah, I not like all a dream, but like trying to figure out where the line is between re uh, reality and true. You know what you're imagining, mm -hmm. where your where your perception of reality determines what you're seeing. You know. For anyone who hasn't played the Hellblade, like I would how... definitely suggest doing that. Okay. You know, Daru like how you bring... and Mayuri, they never they, they talk about each other, but they don't oh talk God. to each other. It's true. What if they're the same person? Which <laughs> one of them's real? No. That actually is <laughs> true. I can't think Get of out. a single time that Daru and Mayuri have talked to, have talked to yeah, each other. Dar Daru Yasu is the real person. I remember one time Daru talked to, to Mayuri. <laughs> Is when he asked her to say maybe Dara's like, like sure, Rintaro, uh, Mayuri, yeah, those are her bananas. And, you know, just patting his friend on the back. So maybe he's nuts. Maybe Mayuri, you know, isn't real or died long ago. Maybe, maybe Mayuri's maybe, a ghost maybe android. Maybe we are the ghost, Alpaca man. Ghost android terminator sent from the future to, to, to say cute things at Okube. What and if this Rintaro is the Alpaca bananas. man? There we go. <laughs> All right, someone left. Okay, we should probably just end this. And the only way we're going to find those sure truths is reading is chapters is three young. and four, which will happen two weeks from now. So, yeah. In the Yay. meantime, next week, you can join us for a podcast about a rewrite, again, about another heroine from rewrite, or actually the first heroine from rewrite, Kota Recon Bay. But Let's in the go. meantime, this has been the Kiniku Sensation. The Doo -doo -doo. Joining us Doo -doo. was Ashley. Yeah, her out Austin. Do -do -do. Freelance. <laughs> Good, he stopped it. Magus. <sighs> Do -do -do. Christ Almighty, Rupert. I had to stop. <laughs> okay, hey, Rini, you have to do it. Let's hear the best two to do. Um, Rini. Uh, Rini. <clears throat> all right, all right. I'm gonna do it in the uh, Mayuri voice that you all refuse no. to accept as real. Do it. Do -do -do. <laughs> that horrible Easy. monstrosity on earth Grim was here in spirit he, he comes much like the wind and of course myself the existential dread only now setting in David so, existential bread Well, I wish I was dead we'll see you all next week and until then <laughs> have fun everyone we'll see bye, you all everyone. next time everyone say bye bye, bye.